Hello again, this is Alex with MasterHRStrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, December 16th, 2022. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Your likes, uh, your shares is what keeps this channel going. Additionally, if you hit the like button, uh, more people will see this video because this is the way YouTube algorithms work. Uh, today we're going to talk about stocks. There is a possibility that this, what we're seeing right now, the strong selling we're seeing right now, is a bear trap. Um, or is it an opportunity to sell short? So we will try to answer this question today as stocks are sending mixed messages. However, junk debt actually shows a lack of selling. So um, I am, uh, if you have been listening to my videos, I've been kind of leaning towards the bear trap theory as of the right this instant. Gold does not believe the dollar and silver even less so. I will try to explain uh, what I mean there. <clears throat> and uh, we'll try to figure out how low will oil go. Uh, if you are a member, then stay tuned. We will cover all of these various stocks. Uh, for example, natural gas, uh, staples, utilities, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Dropbox, Kraft Heinz, Costco, and Boeing, uh, among the few. If you're not yet a subscriber, consider signing up by going to the link in the description. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so uh, on this chart, uh, as always, we, we can see four horizontal lines. We have this green, blue, red, and yellow lines. These are my proprietary MasterCharsTrading.com price, price action indicators. They're available for TradingView.com, and this is a TradingView.com interface. So TradingView.com is free. You can sign up for a free account there and have a similar uh, graphing interface for yourself. I think it's very useful. Uh, if you're going to trade stocks, you may want to have at least an idea of what the um, graphing interface looks like. Uh, how does it even uh, look? So um, candlestick chart. So we have candlesticks, this uh, red and green uh, funny looking things. They're called candlesticks. We can also use, uh, uh, instead of candlestick, we can use line chart. Um, it's not as useful, but we can do it. So let's say that so the line chart only shows the closing price. It does not show uh, price, uh, you know, how high or how low uh, or where did it open or where did it close. Uh, but looking at this chart, we can see that uh, uh, the price, this purple line, has been kind of bumping against this red support resistance line. You can kind of see it there behind the line. It is currently at 3991 for S&P 500. And it's been bumping around that area and you can see there were a bunch of downward facing arrows. So these are actually short signals. Similar as we had before, for example, right here in, the, in August and again here in September. Notice that uh, in August, September, these short signals were actually extremely successful. So if you sold short um, around that area, you would have gotten a very nice gain. However, uh, stocks seems to have seem to have button, but, bottomed around October and continued to rally. Now, the latest uh, selling, I'm going to go back to uh, candlesticks. It's just easier for me to read. I'm going to show you. Uh, the latest selling is two days, so one on uh, 15th of December and one uh, yesterday on Friday the 16th. So if you listen to my previous videos, I was talking about this level, the high from November 8th, which is at 3867 for quite some time. We can look at the same chart looking on four hour chart. So we're looking at this symbol. ES1 exclamation point on trading view, which are continuous futures on a four hour chart. So four hour chart, notice right there where I'm hovering, is an interval. It's an interval. Uh, each candlesticks, each, each of these funny looking things is a uh, four hours worth of activity. So notice this level where I'm hovering, it's from November 8th. Uh, also notice that on a four hour chart, this is where the breakout occurred. You can see that we closed above this blue support resistance line right where I'm hovering. And then we continued higher. 
Uh, in fact, I made several uh, ghost feed projections and they all came to be correct. Uh, I project projected this high and it, it was indeed correct. I was talking about that we're going to get a pullback, we're going to get a pullback, I just didn't know where it was going to come to and how and when exactly it's going to happen. Nobody really knows it. However, I was talking about this November 8th high. Yesterday we actually hit that level. Here it is on the 4 hour chart. Um, now on 4 hour chart this is a you know relatively short term so we're talking about days to weeks at most uh, out in the future. Uh, when we're talking about daily charts we're talking about you know, weeks to month out into the future. So looking at a very short term action I think this level where I'm hovering 3843 on the 4 hour chart which is, which is um, so shown by this red line is going to prove important we're going to most likely see some sort of a bottom in action here if we um, strongly break below this level we actually could continue down even further towards this yellow line um, and if we break below this level in a convincing manner um, on the four hour chart again uh, then most then it would imply that we're now in a downtrend on a four hour chart so we will need to watch this level very carefully in the next few days uh, if we see uh, signs of a bottom in action then it could become a very uh, low risk entry on the long side in other words buy-in looking at the same level on the daily chart uh, so we're looking at it right now where we, we you know touch that level um, so is this a bear trap? We have a multiple short selling signals. Uh, we had them very similar signals back in August and September. We took them and we made good money here. Are we going to get something of the similar manner? So I have this here. Is this a bear trap? So bear traps happen when uh, people uh, who follow a system, for example, an algorithmic trading system. This is an algorithmic trading system. Uh, if we follow the system, the robot should be selling right now for a move down, you know, possibly towards new le new lows. I'm looking at this from a human perspective, and I'm seeing very strong bullish signals also. Like, for example, this big candle on November 10th, Additionally, there's bottom and candle right there on October 13th. So, this, um, these are not not bearish at all. These are bullish. In other words, you want to be thinking about buying. Um, so, this is what I'm kind of looking at as we speak. Um, is this a bear trap, or is this a potential opportunity for a very low risk entry on the long side? The bullish levels, in other words, where we will declare a downtrend or a bear market that started in the beginning of this year for S&P 500 over, is not that far off. It's at 43.18, which is currently around 10% away. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of you know, uh, not not very far. Um, as a matter of fact, um, if we look at some of the other indices, so for example, here is Dow Jones. Dow Jones actually broke out into a new bull market. Here is an uptrend up arrows right there. And these are, I mean, it's, it's very important, uh, you know, to understand that this is a big part of the stock market. Dow Jones uh, consists of 30 uh, stocks and they're, you know, big and important. Uh, so if a Dow Jones is breaking into a bull market, uh, why can't S&P 500 do the same thing? So Dow Jones is currently in the bull market. S&P 500 is indecisive. If we look at NASDAQ, NASDAQ is actually lagging badly. So notice that we haven't even gotten to the red uh, support resistance line yet. And this is Another kind of thing is that I usually the all all of the indices move together in lockstep, so I think we we will see uh, a move higher still. Um, so I'm looking at Nasdaq. I'm like, 
it just doesn't feel complete. I think we will see a move higher at least towards this red support resistance line, which is around 11% higher. But if we get if we get an 11% move for NASDAQ, then S&P 500 most likely will enter a bull market um, by closing this S&P 500 by closing above this uh, blue line. And at that point, that's it. The bear market is over. We should be buying. We should be thinking about buying stocks. Right this instant, the situation is really difficult. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. The robots saying sell, 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 sell. Humans are saying, wait a second. There's all this positive sex signals you know so let, let's 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 see what happens basically um, another big piece of the puzzle is the Russell 2000 small caps index I already highlighted this chart on multiple occasions I made two projections into the future so um, you can kind of see this thin white lines I'm actually they're called ghost feed projections so I can show you they're sort of so this is my optimistic projection why, why am I doing this is because we can project my indicators into the future this uh, green blue red and yellow lines we can project them into the future and um, notice what's happening here in January okay so here is January 17th projected into the future notice the way indicators are coming down towards the price action so, in my previous videos, I actually described this um, date, which is rapidly approaching, by the way, it's literally a month away, as the final argument of kings. Um, the reason being is because I think um, the war in Ukraine is being sort of put back on a kind of underestimated by the just the way I live in the United States and the way the things are happening in the United States is as if nothing is happening in Europe as if there is no huge bloody uh, engagement that is going on between uh, uh, former Soviet Union and uh, another former Soviet Union uh, member state uh, Ukraine uh, and Russia so this is a big deal and I keep pointing this out and I said that um, I think the reason, one of the reasons, uh, correlations versus causation, right? I'm looking at correlation of popularity of President Putin, or dictator Putin, rather, um, and the performance of the stock market. So the lower the popularity goes, the better the stock market is doing. So my fingers crossed projection is that at this point in January, something will happen where his popularity will collapse. If that happens, most likely stocks will break out. So this is my optimistic scenario. Okay, projection into January, into February. All right. Pessimistic scenario is uh, something really bad happens, as for example, a nuclear weapon is used somewhere in Europe or elsewhere. Uh, nevertheless, I think we still will see a move higher for stocks and at least an attempt uh, of a breakout into a bull market. Notice how close we are to the bull market. So bull market is above this blue support resistance line for uh, Russell 2000 and in the future though that line will come down closer to the price action. So I think uh, we will we again we're looking at some sort of a big event um, in January, maybe they're going to start a second wave uh, of mobilization. If you are not following the news, by the way, um, Russia is mobilizing just random people. You know, if you're, I don't know, a person that can hold uh, a weapon uh, and you are between 17 and I believe 55 or even 60, you will be uh, drafted um, and uh, they will put you in a uh, uh, in war basically and it's 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 really bad so if you don't you know understand what's happening this is this is what's happening so there they already did a first round of mobilization they mobilized 300,000 people they're planning on doing another round of mobilization I think somewhere in January so we're looking at this date and uh, most something will happen around the date maybe they'll announce a second wave of mobilization and they could mobilize half a million or a million people so we're looking at World War II style um, 
uh, attacks on Ukrainian positions where they will simply overwhelm uh, the defenders with um, humans. Now, looking back at getting back to stocks, so we have two potential scenarios. Um, a bullish scenario, everything is fine. A bearish scenario where things just really unravel for no good reason uh, and, col and stocks collapse uh, sometime in February. Now, to tr try to figure out which scenario is more likely, we're looking now at junk debt, high yield bonds, symbol JNK. So high yield bonds, I'm going to show it on a weekly chart. So weekly chart meaning each candlestick is one week's worth of activity. Down below here we see a correlation coefficient. So correlation coefficient to S&P 500. In other words, how well do uh, junk debt and stocks correlate? Do they do the same thing? If stocks move higher, junk debt moves higher. If, junk, if, if stocks move lower, junk debt moves lower. Do they do it more or less? Um, correct in the same in, in, you know do they do it more or less uh, consistently or not the answer is yes they do it very consistently occasionally there is a negative correlation you can see a foray into negative territory so junk debt and stocks occasionally do not do the same thing as um, as each other but currently they are indeed doing the same thing as each other in fact Notice here where I'm hovering, it says 0.95. That means on 95% of occasions, stocks and high yield bonds, or JNK, are doing the same thing. So, my question to you is why is there such strong selling? Okay, so notice for two days we had just very intense selling here. However, we had very little selling from the high yield bonds. This was the this was the extent of, of selling one two. This is the this is it, like a quarter of a percent maybe. So what I'm seeing here is a lack of strong selling, even though we're also getting a short signal. Short signal happens when we have a high above this red support resistance line. So the security is in the downtrend. For example, this is a new low. We came up towards this red support resistance line. This is a short signal when, when we close below this uh, red line. We're seeing it again right now, but it's just not very convincing. So this is where I'm uh, looking at the stocks and I'm saying, okay, maybe this is a bear trap. Uh, maybe we should just wait and see what happens. So this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to wait and see what happens uh, in the next few days, two weeks. I'm looking at the four hour chart. We're looking at 3843 as the level uh, to watch very carefully, especially if we see like bottoming kind of candlesticks here and then a surge. I mean, this is a no brainer at that point. So I tend towards uh, right this instant. I'm I'm thinking this is a bear trap, um, and I'm going to wait and see. Yeah, I, I could I could have. It's possible that we're going to miss this uh, short signal, but uh, I would rather be, um, as they say, I would rather be on the outside looking in than um, inside wishing I was out. So that's a, a trading kind of proverb. Moving on to. Forex universe. Here is dollar DXY uh, symbol DXY on trading view dollar currency index. So it's uh, not exactly a pair in the currency pair. It's uh, uh, I believe six or seven currencies uh, weighted together. So if we look at the weekly chart of dollar, this is uh, again why my, I love my indicators and they're so obvious. So this is what. Uh, the breakout looks like the breakout occurred back here in July of 2021. We had a enormous, I called it a gigantic move for a uh, dollar. Um, now I think the dollar has topped. Technically speaking, um, again we're looking now at the daily chart. We just looked at the weekly chart, so I think the dollar has stopped right there in September of 2022, and then kind of continued lower. If you're trading on the weekly charts using my indicators, make sure to change the settings or on the length to 52. 
If you're trading on daily charts, keep the length as 250. So on daily chart, this is the same chart, but just daily. Okay, so each candlestick is one day's worth of activity. Here, each candlestick is one week's worth of activity. So this is the top right there in September of this year. We had several breakdowns, uh, support breaks, bearish candles. I point them, them all out in the uh, my videos. And if you're a subscriber, then you're following along as well. We had a breakdown right there on Friday the 11th of November. Uh, so at that point where I'm hovering right now, uh, right now on Friday 11th of November, a algorithm would say, okay, we now have a setup. So a setup to what? Do what? To buy, to buy the dollar. So on Friday, November 11th, we had a setup to buy the dollar. On Monday, the 21st of November, we had a signal to buy the dollar. I was looking at them like, I don't like this action. Um, maybe this is a bull trap. So far, I've, I, I was correct. Uh, we have moved lower after the signal occurred. We are now super close to an outright bearish levels. So a bearish level imply a beginning of a new downtrend. In other words, we're no longer going to be thinking about buying. We're only going to be thinking about selling. If we close below this level where I'm hovering, I'm reading it off the chart. It's the level is 102.185 for the dollar. We could, th this is the bearish levels. At that point, we'll think, okay, we need to start selling. Can the dollar bounce a little bit in the near term? Yeah, very much possible. In fact, it bounced for a couple of days here, uh, yesterday and today, uh, th or rather Thursday and Friday, uh, on the 15th of December and 16th of December. However, looking at gold, so we're looking at gold right now. Why am I looking at gold? Because gold is traded in dollars. Where I'm hovering, it says XAU divided by USD. So if the lower part of this equation, US dollar, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Think of gold as being constant. But what it is traded in, in this case, US dollar, is being uh, is fluctuating. If the lower part of this equation is fluctuating to the downside, in other words, that lower part of this equation is getting smaller and smaller, the constant will increase, will, will, will move higher. Now, gold is actually not really selling okay so if if dollar is uh, getting weaker gold should be getting stronger which is in fact what's it doing all right so in fact right there on Friday the 16th of December gold moved hi moved higher dollar also moved higher okay so dollar moved got stronger shouldn't gold get weaker it didn't. So this is an important thing to understand. I think this is also now setting us a bear trap. Okay, so this is a very interesting kind of like educational chart. Uh, notice that we had, uh, for example, we had a, a move higher here in October uh, of this year, in the 4th of October, then moved lower. We did not make a lower low on two occasions. And in November here, we did not make a lower low and surged higher breaking above this previous peak uh, from October on uh, November 10th. Notice we came up to the red line and touched it. So again, we had actually a short signal right there where I'm hovering on November 16th. Yet we moved lower very mildly, very little, just a tiny little bit. And also notice where we moved lower too. We moved lower to just the top of this uh, previous breakout from October. So just a very nice looking chart and now we're trying to break above this red support resistance line notice that the high uh, or the, the bullish levels are at uh, the blue line oh, excuse me <laughs> bullish levels are at um, basically 1900 so if um, uh, gold moves towards those levels we will be now in the uptrend bull market can we move lower again and retest this uh, highs from October 4th it's actually at 1730 yes it's possible 
but I'm I'm wondering if it's going to be a, another you know a buying opportunity at this point. So if the dollar has stopped, my basic premise premise is this: if the dollar has stopped, and I think it has stopped, if the dollar has stopped, then gold should appreciate. Okay. Looking at silver, in fact, silver is reacting very positively to the topping, potential topping of the dollar. So silver actually broke into a new bull market. Okay, this is a new bull market for silver. Now I, I normally look at gold uh, more than silver. Silver overreacts. I mean gold overreacts, but silver overreacts even more. So uh, right now we have silver breaking into a new bull market already. Uh, gold may be springing a bear trap for people who think that gold will continue lower. Dollar may have tapped. Very strong possibility dollar has indeed tapped. So we're looking at all of those three things together. I think um, we're... I, I'm liking gold more and more basically at this point. And I'm definitely not going to short at this point. I don't like this action. I, I think this is a bear trap also. All right, and finally, I want to wrap up today with uh, oil. Uh, so oil is uh, a good thing if you want to power your engines. At the same time, oil is a terrible thing because it feeds um, various uh, dictators around the world. Uh, if you haven't heard about a monumental um, announcement this week, um, Lawrence Livermore Labs in, uh, let me see, Lawrence Livermore, uh, Lawrence Livermore Labs uh, just announced a breakthrough uh, for uh, uh, fusion ignition. Okay, so it's, I think it's, well, I mean, this this can be compared to people in the cave age, cave to cavemen uh, discovering fire. Uh, I think it's that big. Um, we're talking about enormous potential for unlimited energy. Uh, I mean, there are many possibilities, but if this uh, comes to pass, um, this would uh, also imply. Uh, weapons of tremendous power. So think about lasers being powered by fusion uh, reaction. Uh, you can hang, for example, a fusion uh, satellite in, in space over uh, former Soviet Union and shoot down any missile with laser beams uh, that would be launched uh, with nu nuclear-tipped um, uh, weapons, for example, from from Soviet from Soviet Russia. That's just one of the applications. We're not even talking about you know peaceful applications, but uh, for national security, this is uh, enormous. So I am I'm hoping that we're going to see you know large developments uh, in this area soon. Coming back to oil, we're still powering our stuff with oil and not with you know fusion, obviously. Uh, looking at oil, oil has indeed hit 52-week lows right there, Friday uh, 9th of December. Uh, looking at weekly chart of oil, this is a weekly chart, so each candlestick is one week's worth of activity. There is some support uh, from previous lows here in August of 2021 and then in November of 2021 around um, low 60s for oil. This is uh, West, West Texas Intermediate. Brent is slightly different. Now, if that doesn't hold, then I, I, there's not much support. Um, there is good support at around $34. So can oil go to $34? I certainly hope so, and I really hope that this is going to be uh, also coupled with the fusion uh, potential. Now, I know this is still many, they say many years away, but this is a huge, enormous breakthrough uh, for the entire humanity. This could, this could really change um, pretty much everything, uh, the way we think about energy and the way and the possibilities of our, um, 
uh, human development and a civilizational development. Uh, I mean, this is really big. So, uh, looking at oil, yeah, we could we could get to like 30s, uh, low 30s potentially. Uh, but the anyway, first step is uh, lower 60s. So hopefully that will happen in the near term. All right, on this very uh, exciting note, uh, please head over to my site, mastercharstrading.com. Click on sign up. I have uh, two products and two packages. So trading indicators are these lines on the chart. You can use them on daily, weekly. Uh, you can use them on five second chart if you really like uh, just make sure that okay well i mean this is a let's let's use this uh, for example uh, s p 500 futures here's a five second chart this is the 15 second it's just a little bit too too rough uh, but yes you can do it so for example where i'm hovering right there i would have sold it short right there uh, so yes, you can trade using my indicators um, on continuous charts as well. There are some rules. Uh, if you're interested, uh, send me a message. I will explain everything. So this is a trading indicators. Again, you can trade on um, any time frame and pretty much any security. If you are um, just want a newsletter, so I send out a daily uh, newsletter summary uh, for uh, just various stock market coverage coverage of the various markets as well as actual alerts. Uh, on the stocks uh, and the securities we trade and of course the best deal is to get both trading indicators and the newsletters so sign up for that at 59.95 per month it is a steal and you will make your money back very quickly all right again if you have any questions please uh, send me a message uh, you can also send um, a message through tradingview.com there is the button to do that uh, and you can also leave a comment on youtube don't forget to hit the like button as always and thank you for watching have another great trading week bye bye